Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today I wanna actually give you guys a little treat. I'm gonna be sharing with you a sneak peek of a very exciting new project I have coming up. It's something that I have mentioned before on this channel and it is so close to launching and that is my podcast. You all have been asking for so long, can we please have a podcast? Because so many of you are busy and time poor and you don't have the time to actually sit down and watch these videos. You want something that you can just plug into your ear and get that sex advice, sex education, and just amazing sex positive content that y'all know I'm bringing for you every single week. Okay, well, most weeks. Look, some weeks I'm not here, but most weeks I'm bringing it for you and I wanna bring it in a format that is easy for you to consume on the go. So I have been working away on my podcast and I'm so excited about it. I will reveal the launch date to you guys shortly, but today you're going to see a small chunk of an episode. It's a very special episode because I invited my ex-boyfriend, Kai, who many of you will know from this channel. He used to be in some of my earlier vlogs and I spoke to him about his sex life and what it's like being with someone who comes out as a lesbian and life after breaking up with a partner who came out as gay. Kai and I have actually remained amazing friends since breaking up at the beginning of the year and it was really special to have him on the show. Now, before I show you guys my chat with Kai, and there is honestly, there's a hilarious little chat in there that we had about Kai's pickup technique for gay for picking up women in the grocery store. So wait for that. I do want to quickly tell you guys about Astroglide's lube that I'm obsessed with right now. Y'all know I'm a partner of Astroglide. I'm their ambassador and I love this new lube. One of the great parts of being their ambassador is that they send me all their lubes to try. And it's like, not gonna lie, job perks galore because who doesn't want to try all different kinds of lube? And this one, I am really loving right now. It's their organics liquid. This is the smaller size. I like the smaller size ones because they're just so convenient for packing in your bag and taking on the go because a girl never knows when she's going to get it on, you know? But the organic liquid is great because it's made with 95% organic ingredients and it's free from fragrances and parabens and hormones. So it really is honestly the closest thing to your natural lubrication without all those harmful additives and chemicals. And it's water-based. So it really does look and feel like your natural lubrication and a little bit goes a long way. So even a bottle like this is going to last you forever for a few dollars. And if you've been watching my channel for long enough, you should know that wetter is better. Always incorporate personal lube into sex, even if you're already turned on and naturally lubricated because it's gonna help to cut down on the friction. So I'm gonna pop the link to this baby in the description down below. Do make sure you go and check it out. And also when you guys buy Astroglide products, you actually do help to support me and support my channel because Astroglide are a big supporter of me. And if they see that you guys like what I like, they'll keep supporting me. So that's always good. All right, go and enjoy my podcast and let me know what you guys think. Check, check. Just put it nice and close. Check, hello, yeah. So you legitimately pick up women in coals. This is like an actual technique for you. I mean, it's not my go-to, but you doubted me, so I- Of course I doubted put you. Put in action. Who picks up women in coals? Talk me through this. How would you do it? Like you see a cute girl. It depends on what comes to you at the time, but I gave you the example when I was in the Mexican Isle, I just literally asked a, asked a girl, um, you know, do you prefer soft shells or hard shell tacos? Like it's just a... Do you prefer soft shell or hard shell? You said this to a random woman in Coles. Okay, what did she respond? I mean, it worked. I got a number, but I think... Stop! That actually worked? It de well, it depends. You, you obviously, you don't go up... Maybe she was in just such a state of shock that she... Yeah, just, just wanted me to shoe off. Wait, um, what is your hit rate with picking up women in Coles? Are we talking like three out of five, four out of five? Oh, five out of five, I reckon. Every time you do this, you pick, you get a girl's number. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you've done anything. You're getting a number. Don't they think it's creepy? If and, I, and that's what I was trying to say before. If I was shopping and some dude came up to me, I'd be like, what the hell? You can't go up acting like a creep. And if you get the sense that you've made someone uncomfortable, even before you open your mouth, like you're not going to be sitting around hovering there like an absolute moron. Like, 
you, you just got to read read the room and that's something you used to like be able to help me understand better is reading the room and and knowing when's a good time and when when not to but again like what harm is it going up and asking so, like just like I said I talked to everyone so I could have made it sound as if I was just having a conversation as friends or whether it meant something more I mean just because I got a number doesn't mean I've taken it home or anything and you're not going straight up to them and like hey can I have your number you're having a conversation and if the conversation yeah. goes well then you ask for yeah like it's just make a joke make people laugh like there's nothing better than seeing someone and don't smile. say something sexual don't exactly. say something about how she looks just yeah, don't, be... yeah that's one thing definitely don't comment on someone's looks or age just be nice like it doesn't hurt to to go up to someone and just make their day and make them smile and have, have a joke I think that's so important there's there's you know, do your thing for everyone else and just be, just be nice. It's not hard. And if, you know, you get a chick's number and it ends up being, you know, one of the girls is actually I'm really close to as a friend. I don't see her sexually and I don't think she sees me sexually and we're just good friends. Like it's get Another to know way of people meeting without people. being a weirdo. Yeah. yeah, don't be a weirdo. So to wrap up, I have to ask you to tell me about when is the best sex or what is the best sex you've ever had? I mean, you, technically, you're supposed to say with me, but I'll just I'll just pretend like. There's so much that goes into it. Um, I mean, there's a lot of memories that ended in fun nights that resulted in sex, but the sex itself, I think, just one where both of you are rolling back and just thinking, "Oh, that was great." I don't know. I did. You won't offend me. Not you. Anyone listening. Ah, uh, okay. If there's one of one of your one of your rotation girls listening in, or uh, there's a few of the, the the recent girls that know about you that sort of research you. Um, uh, okay, we don't want to hurt your image, so, <laughs> so they're all good. They're all good. Okay, what, what what's the worst sex you've ever had? I think I know this one. You think you think it's that one? I don't think it was that one. Okay, the, are we thinking about the girl that you had sex with in a gutter? Yeah, not that one. Okay, that sounded pretty bad. Okay, there's something worse than that. Oh my god, what was it? I just. Like we were friends and it just sort of escalated and it was just not what I thought. It was kind of, it wasn't all, we actually never spoke after that ever again, which is kind of sad, but the sex was just, yeah, no, nah, it, was, it was bad. It was just the, the, not the awkwardness of us as people, but just whatever I was into at that time, it just wasn't me. Like I, I just I, I, I just don't it. know why you're describing the worst sex of your life as a slightly awkward encounter where you couldn't see the person again. You've literally told me about having sex with a woman in a gutter who fisted herself, which, to be honest, I'm actually quite impressed by, while you were having sex in the gutter without any personal lubricant. FYI, saying, guys, never put anything in the anus without lube. Please, yeah. just don't do it to yourself. And you also told me about a time you had a girl vomit on your dick. How is that not the worst sex you've ever had? <laughs> if someone vomited on my genitals, I'd be like, okay, that's that's forever scarred in my memory as the worst, like most horrifying traumatic think, experience of my life. I think you're taking life. this one out of context. There was no vomiting on genitals. It was the act of something happening. And she then... was deep throating you. She gagged and then she had to run to the bathroom and vomit, yeah. which is, I mean, she might as well have vomited on your dick. It's, yeah, but you It's pretty just... offensive. No, but you've changed it. That was obviously her first time and I just was like trying to make sure she was okay. I'm not sitting here going, oh, how dare you do that? That's just ridiculous. No, I'm not saying you're, you're like that. I'm just saying like surely that makes the list of bad sex for you. No, why? Uh, just Just because someone else has had a bad experience doesn't mean that I should make that mine. And and for whatever reason, like I said, it was I'm pretty sure it was the first time she'd ever given oral. So she was new to it and I didn't want to make her feel bad for anything. So you just got to support them. What do you think um, men wish women understood more about sex? Because you've told me a lot recently about, you know, some of the girls that you're having casual sex with. And something that really struck me was you were saying that you noticed a lot among the women that you'd had sex with that they were very low in confidence and that that was more of a turn off than anything about the way that yeah. they could have possibly looked. Yeah, look, I, I think the, the best sex I, I did have was actually with a woman who just knew what she wanted. There's been a few and it's been great. Like I, I'm definitely finding it in the more mature um, of the ladies lately is, you know, go out and get what you want and and communicate it's such a massive turn on for for me personally um but also for them they don't drive it but they 
there's no awkwardness. And you don't get like turned off as well when girls like because you've had girls like bring out sex toys and all sorts of things in the bedroom, and you don't mm. find that. Why would that like? Be? Well, some men are intimidated yeah. by it. Look, I don't know why you'd be intimidated by that. Like, this is your the person that you are currently having sex with. This is their pleasure. Like, wh- what's not to get off on that? Um, I think that's awesome, but yeah, let let them try what they want to try. As long as it's not hurting anyone, like it doesn't hurt you. What? Why would it hurt your ego? That the girls having a great time and you're supporting that. I mean, that's that's the real thing. Like, yeah, I remember recently a poor girl just she just lacked confidence in a way. I was like, is everything all right? And she's like, yeah, yeah, keep going. And it just, you know, you just sort of had to check in every now and then because. You could tell that she was conscious about how she looked. Whether it be how she looked and, like, she had a good body. I don't understand what she was worried about. But we, we had a chat probably about a week later. And she said she was dealing with a lot. And I said, look, I totally understand. And, you know, if you ever need anything, you know, if you just want to hang out and go for a beer or... And she, Yes, she liked beer. Um, I said, look, I'd always be out for a chat and do not have to make it sexual. Like, I understand there's there's... Everyone's got a different story and you just got to be so respectful of others i think that's so important um yeah stop trying to make it all about you and, and you as an individual but i think you've got to respect people it doesn't it's not hard either anyway. i think that's a good description of good sex good sex happens where there's no ego involved and where there's lots of respect and lots of communication communication so important and i think and i think that's actually why we're here today it, with the amazing relationship we have because we've always had just amazing open, honest communication. Yeah, uh, and that's something I wanted to improve on because I was pretty bad at it. You know, certain people might think different things, um, but in in our friendship anyway, we we definitely, I'd say we'd have a better communication, um, you know, skill set than than 99.9% of of friends and couples. Um, We're pretty open, 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 honest book. Well, thank you for being an open and honest book for me today and just revealing your your sex life and our very unconventional relationship. You know I love you, even if we're not entirely sure if the feeling's mutual, but I'm going to still just put, put my heart on my sleeve out there. Um, but, yeah, I adore you. You're one of the good ones. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me.